by your blood, Jesus, that we are free, free from sin, free from um, from death, God. We know that we will be in eternity with you one day, and we praise you, Jesus. And it's all because of your blood. So help us to have humble hearts, remembering always what you've done for us and living only for you, Jesus. Help us to focus on your word this morning, nothing else. Everything else can wait. You deserve it all, God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. How I always remember where Philippians is, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and General Electric Power Company. General, Galatians, Electric, Ephesians, Power, Philippians, and then Company, Colossians. Then the rest of it, you look at that little thing in the front of the book, what tells you where to go. Philippians chapter 4. New Year. How's it going to go? How's it going to be? What's going to happen? No answers to any of those questions. If you think back to last year, at the beginning of the year, you had no idea that business would be like it was or it wasn't. You'd have no idea that you would have that illness, that trouble, that trial, that tribulation. You probably think back to the year that you've experienced and the trials that you've had, and you had no idea you were going to face those things. And I think the same is going to be true of this year. You have no idea. None of us have any idea what's going to happen. And so... A philosophy thing is we either focus on what's going to happen or we focus on how we're going to respond. We focus on the circumstances or we look towards the inside. The Bible all over the place, directly and indirectly, teach us that problems are for our good. James tells us, hey, listen, when you have trials of many kinds, count it all joy, it develops patience. It develops perseverance. It develops character. Faith is developed. Paul teaches that by example and by word, and, and Jesus teaches that through example and through word. Moses teaches that through example and in word. So either we have a choice. We have two philosophies to look at. It's either prepare the road for the child or prepare the child for the road. It's either outside, inside, or inside, outside. Outside, inside is doing all you can to handle the circumstances, to form the circumstances, to condition the circumstances so that you can be joyful, fulfilled, satisfied, and happy, or develop the inside so that no matter what happens on the outside, you can be blessed. You can have that blessed position that comes with an inner joy, an inner peace, a contentment that has nothing to do with circumstances. Now, so the choice is inside out or outside in. Which road will you take? Inside out or outside in? Now, I think the Scripture clearly teaches us that it's inside out. That's what we need to do for. That's what we do. We Our goals need to be not that we're going to have this much money, not that we're going to have this much uh, impact, or we're going to do this, that, and the other, but it ought to be internal goals that we have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow in faith. I'm going to grow in hope. I'm going to grow in joy. I'm going to grow in perseverance. I'm going to grow in contentment. I'm going to start out in 2022, and I'm going to head down the road, whatever happens, and, and I am going to obey the word that says, no matter what happens, rejoice. No matter what happens, celebrate. I'm going to get stronger on the inside, and so it's inside out, not outside in. Now, Outside in is foolish because you can't control the outside. Outside in doesn't make any sense at all because all of us, we all know, objectively we know that we cannot control life. 
We just can't do it. I mean, you, you can plan all you want. You can, you can organize all you want. You can discipline different outside things all you want at work, at home, at school, wherever you go at play, whatever it is. You can say that this is going to be great. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. You know, you can, you can prepare for that amazing celebration of life that's going to be there and all those kind of things, but you really have no idea. You have no control over events. You have no control over things, over circumstances. So it, it really is a foolish endeavor to be outside in. However, it is not foolish to be inside out because that's what God wants, first of all. And also, it is, it is a, it's more beneficial. It's, it's more wise. It, it, to, to prepare the inside for whatever may happen. Now, Jesus never said that if we follow him, everything's going to be good. He never said that. I know it's preached a lot these days, but it's just not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't tell us that if we believe in him, trust in him, if we are obedient to him, that our life is going to be really, really good. It's going to be, it's just going to get better and better and better. And there's going to be more reason to celebrate. There's going to be more blessings. That's just not the truth. But what Jesus has promised us and and what the scripture has made aware to us that no matter what we go through, in uncontrollable circumstances, we will have enough strength and power and contentment through Christ. He will give us what we need to navigate whatever those things are. So inside out, inside out. Think about that this, this week. Think about that this, this next few weeks. Prepare yourself every day for inside out. It's the right choice to make. And Paul gives us some wonderful reasons why that's the right choice to make. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 10 through 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. Paul, great example for us. Went through and kind of wrote down those things that he experienced in life. He followed Jesus. He was blinded on the road to Damascus. He met Jesus. Ananias came to see him there in, in Damascus. Didn't want to go because Paul was notoriously difficult on believers. He was uh, wanting to arrest them all. He, he was a hothead. He was, he was definitely stubborn on taking away the way from so the, the, the scene. But when Paul receives Christ, he goes off for three years and gets developed by the Holy Spirit and a return. And so he preaches everywhere. He preaches in Israel. He preaches in Turkey. He preaches in Greece. He ends up preaching in Rome. He is dedicated. He is devoted. He is one of God's chosen people. He was given the assignment to go and make straight the way of the Lord, to make it clear, to give the gospel. He was called to be an ambassador. He was called to be a church starter. He was called to be the pastor of all pastors. He was called to do the work of the evangelist. He was called to do the work of a theologian. And we've got all this material that, that we read that, that the Holy Spirit put on Paul to write, to understand, to, to educate us to the ways and the things of the kingdom. And that's Paul. He was a winner. He had learned many wonderful things. But here's what Paul experienced as he served Christ. Prison over and over. Poor guy couldn't stay out of prison. He just couldn't do it. He was whipped. He was beaten numerous times by soldiers. He was beat with a whip. He survived death on several encounters. You remember, he was a hunted man. Paul was hunted by the Jews. Paul was hunted by the Gentiles. Paul was hunted by the Romans. He was hunted by everybody. Paul was beaten with rods. Paul was stoned by rocks. I mean, I, I just can't think about that. You know, you, you just got a group of people surrounding you and they pick up rocks, one pounders, two pounders, and they just pelt you with it. I mean, what do you cover up? 
You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be trying to cover up my face and then other parts, and I'd oh, dad, probably just oh, lay, on the, lay on the ground in the fetal position, and they're just pelting you with these rocks. I, I can't imagine that. He was shipwrecked, dangerously shipwrecked, just, just pulled out of the surf, hunted all the time. He was hungry. He was thirsty, he was cold, and he was naked. I don't know if you've ever watched any of that naked and afraid that's on TV sometimes. Now, I'd much rather put up with mosquitoes than that cold and naked. I mean, like today, out there inside a little palm branch hut that you built for yourself trying to keep a little fire going, I can't imagine what that was like. Paul knew what it was like to be cold and naked, hungry and thirsty. And Paul says that no matter what happens, rejoice. Paul says, I have learned to be content no matter what was taking place. So when we look at these scriptures that we have today, we're we're talking to the Hall of Famer. We're talking to the, the, the one that has the right to teach us these things because Paul was an inside-out guy. He experienced great hardship. And, and the bottom line is, if, if you think that you evaluate circumstances and those circumstances determine how much faith someone has, Paul would, would fail in faith. <laughs> There's no way Paul failed in faith. So let's just look at three things that we can learn from today. Enough to chew on for for a long time. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. How Paul did it. How Paul was able to handle all that and be faithful. How Paul was able to handle all that and not quit. How he was able to handle all those trials and tribulations and rejoice in the Lord. Look at verse 10. He says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity, but it's been revived. There are two things here that are really important for us to see and and to let it sink in and, and chew on a little bit. Let it soak a little bit. Here it is. Paul rejoiced in spiritual activity. He rejoiced in what he saw that was without question of a spiritual nature. Inside out means that you look for the spiritual things to to rejoice in, to position yourself in, to fuel you forward. You look for the spiritual. You don't look for the worldly. You don't look for the outside. You don't look for the events to line up just right. But you look for those spiritual things. And there's two spiritual things here that Paul looked at. First of all, there was a renewal in these two things. There was a revival in these two things. Concern and opportunity. Concern and opportunity. He's speaking to the Philippians. He was in prison. They fed him, they clothed him, they took care of him, they brought him water. They met needs. They always wanted to help. They wanted to provide the money for his food. They wanted to provide, you know, help along the way to to meet his needs that he had. And he said that he didn't doubt them. He didn't doubt their heart. But he said, I have rejoiced in the Lord greatly. It's a deep rejoicing. It's a firm rejoicing. And that rejoicing is, is that I see the renewal of concern and opportunity for me. Two spiritual things. Concern. Look for concern. Look for compassion. Why? Because it's of the Lord. Look for no strings attached concern in life. Because where you see no strings attached love, forgiveness, grace, kindness, gentleness, mercy, you see the Lord at work. 
When you're looking at a situation and you say, well, there's no question, there are strings attached in this relationship. The Lord's not at work there. That's not where the Lord's at work. Don't, don't count on that relationship. Don't count on that assignment. Don't count on that agreement. Don't, don't count on that connection there because the Lord's not at work there. The Lord may be all around that. The Lord may be at work, but the receptivity of the people involved are, are, are not such that there is a concern and an opportunity brewing there. And so there's going to be a lack of God's activity. Another way to put it, the fish ain't biting in that hole. They ain't biting. When you're fishing and they're not biting, what do you do? You go find out where they're biting or you change your baits, whatever you need to do. But you don't sit there all day long and fish the same hole they're not biting. In life, in moving forward, in finding God's solution for problems, finding God's enlightenment for how to move forward in a situation, look for spiritual signs, sp signs of spiritual activity. And he saw that in two spiritual signs here. One is concern and the other is opportunity. He said, man, I rejoice greatly. I rejoice deeply because I recognize concern in you. And that concern has been revived. And now that I see opportunity, I'm rejoicing greatly in the fact that there is spiritual concern and the opportunity is showing that's going on. And so the significance of spiritual things helps us develop an inside-out life, watching for spiritual things. Paul said in Romans chapter 3, no one looks after God, no one sees God, no one understands, no one wakes up in the morning and says, today I am going to live a Christ-like life. The only way that happens is through the Holy Spirit. It does not happen from flesh. It does not happen from human reason and human achievement. And so you look for those signs of spiritual activity, and that's what you rejoice in. So you either got, maybe you need to train yourself. You need to look at life a little differently. I'm only focusing on the outside things, the flesh things, the worldly things, and, and I'm not going to have a strength to maneuver real hard times if that's the case. That's not inside out. That's outside in. So Paul, this, one of the secrets to his strength, he got up after being stoned. He got up after being beat. He didn't quit. When he was cold and naked, he kept moving forward, going for what God wanted for him. He was mistreated. He experienced great injustice in his life. He had done nothing wrong other than preach that Jesus is Lord. And, and I mean, what else would he say? He goes, guys, I saw the guy on the road to Damascus. He blinded me. I've experienced him. I've experienced that it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and I'm doing it for your benefit. I mean, he had good, good ambition. He had good motivation. He was pure in his heart, but he was so misunderstood and he was so feared that he experienced injustice, yet he was an inside-out man, and so he grew and he developed that no matter what happened, he could rejoice and stay committed and directed. He looked at spiritual things. Spiritual things. The second thing is found in verse 11 and 12. Look at this. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. Now, if you can bottle that up, you can make a killing, right? If you can walk around with the top hat, the bowler hat on, and your white, you know, tuxedo selling an enhanced, you know, liquid that you drink a little bit every day, and you are going to just learn how to, to rejoice no matter what the circumstances. And, but we have it here. We've got it here. I, I, I promise you, when Paul says in Romans, when Paul says that all the troubles you face here are nothing compared to heaven, that's, that's just not for us, right? 
You, you, you go to the person that has experienced the most injustice in the world. Think about the guy that was sentenced to life imprisonment. And it turns out the DNA didn't match. That's able to do that. And after being in prison for 40 years, he's set free today. What an injustice. What a horrible thing. I, I think about that. I think about, you know, the, the people that are on death row today and they didn't do it. And I know it's probably a real small number, but it's there, isn't it? It's there in our world. I think about the people that were doing nothing wrong and, and people came to their house in the middle of the night and butchered them, right? And, and there's a little baby left. I, I think about that, those kind of things. I think about people that have had illness after illness after illness in their family. I think about them, you know? How, that doesn't seem to be fair, Lord. That doesn't seem to be right that that family just seems to have one thing after another. And, and they've suffered far more than we have. They've suffered injustice far more than I've had. I mean, I, when I think about myself in that, I went, well, that's not a really a big flip because my, my amount of suffering has been so small in comparison. So if, if the Lord is going to be faithful to his promise there and that heaven is so much better than any suffering here, when you put those people who have really, truly suffered in this world, that's an amazing promise that God has made to us. And that takes great power to be able to, to be faithful in that promise. And we know that God is faithful and God keeps his promises. It's about his character. That's an amazing thing that God has told us in his word. And Paul says, I have learned. I have learned. He says that two times in 11 and 12. I have learned. I have learned. I have learned to be content, whether low or abounding over. In every situation, he says, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. Wow. That's what we all need right there. He learned to be content. He learned to be content. So he learned that Jesus truly satisfies beyond circumstances. Sing a lot about that talk a lot about that. We read a lot of scriptures about that. We are more than overcomers through Christ our Lord. To be content no matter what. You can't put a price tag on that. Paul learned to be content. The reason why Paul was able to rejoice in all things, the reason why he wasn't ever beat down, the reason why he never quit, the reason why he lived with a joy in his heart and a peace in his heart, no matter what circumstance he faced, is because he learned to be content, whether well-fed or hungry, in abundance or need. And so when he was blessed with some abundant thing, it was good. When he went through without an abundance, when he went through with need, it was good. He was tickety-boo. He was good because of Christ in his life, because he had learned that Jesus completely satisfies and Jesus is enough. That's a good goal for 2022, that no matter what happens in my life today, I am going to find that Jesus completely satisfies. He is enough. And he will carry me through whether the circumstances are of abundance or of great need. So we learn to be content. None of us are born with that ability. None of us are born with the gift of contentment. It's something that we learn. How do we learn contentment? By believing God's word, by believing that he is faithful to us, by learning that Jesus is enough, learning that we don't need things to be happy. We don't need events to go our way for us to be satisfied. Jesus gives what we need to live beyond circumstances. And we learn that. We learn that he satisfies when there is plenty and he satisfies when there's not enough. He satisfies when there's health and he satisfies when there's illness. He satisfies. He satisfies when there's a calm in life and he satisfies when there's a storm in life. He's simply greater than our circumstances. And we have to learn that. We have to learn that every single day. It's not an easy lesson to learn. It's a difficult lesson to learn. But that's 
That was one of the pieces of strength of Paul. That was what he understood. He was inside out. And then verse 13, you see this a lot on uh, eye black on football players. They, they think it means they can run faster. That's not what it means at all. It doesn't mean they can hit harder. It doesn't mean they can catch the ball better, but their misunderstanding is okay, I guess. They'll get it one of these days. Based on verses 10, 11, and 12, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You see what Paul's talking about is when I was cold and naked, I could do it all through Christ. When I was beaten with rods and with whips and with stones, I can do it through Christ. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. You see, if it stopped right there after the word things, if, if the understanding, the spiritual understanding was, I can do all things, that would be a false truth. It's not true. I can do all things. No, you can't. No, you can't. I can do all things. By gosh, I can do all things. No, you can't. You can't do all things. You're going to fail. You're not tough enough. You're not tough enough to handle the stonings. You're not tough enough to handle the uh, lack of food and the, and the cold and nakedness and the shipwreck and the disease and the illness. None of us are able to handle that. You can't handle that. I can do all things. No, you can't. But it doesn't just, it's just not those four words or five words. It's I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so what we learn is we learn to rest. We learn to turn loose of. We learn to yield. We learn to just allow him to empower us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what Paul learned. That's a, and that lesson and that experience is available to us. Inside out, inside out, reading his word, believing his word, obeying his word, trusting him, trusting him, learning to trust him, learning to overcome, learning to, to rest in him. Hard thing, hard thing. Now, all of us are hearing this today, and some of us are at just different places. Some of us are at basically a calm in life. Some of us are going through a real trial, real hardship, difficulty, painful, excruciating pain. And even though I may not be experiencing the real harsh pain of that today, I, I can say to you that God is faithful to his word. And if you're going through the most extreme of things today, the most painful of things today, what Paul learned and what Paul experienced is available to you as well. It's available. It's there. It's what God wants for us. What God wants for us that no matter what happens, we're able to rejoice in Christ. Now, for us to be able to live that strengthened life, we've got to come to the place and go, God, in all honesty, I can't do it. I can't face another day. I'm my own strength. My own strength has run out, and you must carry me through. Paul got there. For Paul to learn those things, he had to be broken. He had to be at the end of his rope. He had to be just where he didn't see there was any hope whatsoever to learn these things. So he learned them. He learned them. So three things to think about to start the new year. First of all, learn the significance of spiritual actions of God. Here it was concern and opportunity. Learn to be content. Contentment ought to be a goal. Learn to be content. And learn that all alone, yes, you can't. I cannot. I cannot. But with the second part of that scripture added to it, I can. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Let's pray together. Father, may you be faithful to us today, gracious to us. May your word just stir in our hearts today. And I pray, Lord, that, that, Father, something was said today, Lord, that would help each brother and sister here, Lord, to grow in you, to, to, to learn to be content.
to rejoice in you regardless of what happens, Father, and to grow inside out. And Lord, may each one of us be able to testify at the end of 2022 that we can say we are stronger in you, Lord, because of what we have gone through and because we have trusted you. Lord, you are better than this world. Lord, you are enough. You are sufficient. Father, you are all we need. Help us to learn to walk in your strength and in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, come forth.